Shan K. Hi, Krishna. Arjuna inquired, which are considered to be more perfect? Those who are always properly engaged in your devotional service or those who worship the impersonal Brahman, the unmanifested? Next to Sri Bhagavan Vacha, Maya Vesha Manu Yema, Pitya Yukta Pasate, Shataya Prayupati, Teme Yukta Tama Mataha. The Supreme Personality of Godhead said, those who fix their minds on my personal form and are always engaged in worshipping me with great and transcendental faith are considered by me to be the most perfect. Saniyam yet ya gramam sarvatra samabutaya repanuvanti mamevam sarvabhuta hite rataha. But those who fully worship the unmanifested, that which lies beyond the perception of the senses, the all pervading, inconceivable, unchanging, fixed, and immovable, the impersonal conception of the absolute truth. By controlling the various senses and being equally disposed to everyone, such persons engaged in the welfare of all at last achieve me. Text 5. Klesha di katara stasham avyakta staka chaitasam avyakta higatim dukyam devabu dehava dhir avapayate. For those, who, the, for those whose minds are attached to the unmanifested, impersonal feature of the Supreme, advancement is very troublesome. To make progress in that discipline is always difficult for those who are embodied. Text 6 to 7. Yetu parvani karmani mai sanyas yamat paraha. Ananye neva yogena mamkya yanta upasate. Te shamaham samutarta mrityu samsara sagarat. Bahavani na chiratata maya veshita chaitasam. But those who worship me, giving up all their activities unto me and being devoted to me without deviation, engage in devotional service and always meditating upon me. Having fixed their minds upon me, O son of Pritha, for them I am the swift deliverer from the ocean of birth and death. Text 8. Maya ba mana dasva, mai bhutim vashaya, nivasishya si maya ba, ata utvam na samsayaha. Just fix your mind upon me, the Supreme Personality of Godhead and engage all your intelligence in me. Thus, you will live in me always without a doubt. Text nine. Tachitam samadvatum na shakno si mais tiram yasha yogena tato mam chaptum dhananjaya. My dear Arjuna, O winner of wealth, if you cannot fix your mind upon me without deviation, then follow the regulatory principles of Bhakti Yoga. In this way, develop a desire to attain me. Text 10. Abhyashipa smartosi matkarma paramo bhava madarthamati karmani purvam sithim avapshyasi. If you cannot practice the regulation of Bhakti Yoga, then just try to work for me because. By working for me, you will come to the perfect stage. Text 11. Athei tadapi ashakto si kartum mad yogam ashritaha sarva karma palantyagam tatah guru yatat mavam. If, however, you are unable to work in this consciousness of me, then try to act giving up all results of your work and try to be self-situated. 
text 12. Shriyo hi dhyana ma biyasaj, dhyana dhyana vishishyate, dhyana dkarna falam yagas, yaga jantir anandaram. If you cannot take to this practice, then engage yourself in the cultivation of knowledge. Better than knowledge, however, is meditation, and better than meditation is renunciation of the fruits of action, for by such renunciation, one can attain peace of mind. Acts 13 to 14. One who is not envious but is a kind friend to all living entities, who doesn't think himself a proprietor and is free from false ego, who is equal in both happiness and distress, who is tolerant, always satisfied, self-controlled, and engaged in devotional service with determination, his mind and intelligence fixed on me, such a devotee of mine is very dear to me. Text 15. Yashmad nadvi chete loko, lokan nadvi chate chayaha, harsha marsha bhul, he by whom no one is put into difficulty and who is not disturbed by anyone, who is occupied in happiness and distress, fear and anxiety is very dear to me. Text 16. My devotee who is not dependent on the ordinary course of activities, who is pure, expert, without care, cares, free from all pains and not striving for some result, is very dear to me. One who neither rejoices nor grieves, who neither laments nor desires, and who renounces both auspicious and inauspicious things, such a devotee is very dear to me. Text 18 to 19. Samaha Shatru Chamitrecha Tatha Mana Amana Yaho Sitosna Sukadukeshu Samaha Sangha Varjitaha Tulyanindas Tirmoni Santushto Yena Kenchat Kenachi Aniktaha Stiramatir Baktiman Mebrio Naraha one who is equal to friends and enemies, who is equipped in honor and dishonor, heat and cold, happiness and distress, fame and infamy, who is always free from contaminating association, always silent and satisfied with anything, who doesn't care for any residence, who is fixed in knowledge and who is engaged in devotional service, such a person is very dear to me. Text 20. Ye tu dharma tram idam yatokam tam prayupashate shratha dhana mat parama bhaktas te tivame priyaha. Those who follow this imperishable path of devotional service and who completely engage themselves with faith, making me the supreme goal, are very, very dear to me. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, thank you. Hare Krishna, thank you so much. I believe that was uh, Gautam Mataji and Mithali Mataji reciting the uh, Sanskrit and English so beautifully well recited. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna, dear devotees, welcome to tonight's chapter of Bhagavad Gita, chapter 12, verse number 11, today's verses. 
So I'll start off. My name is Krishna Govinda Das. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Bhagavad Gita, chapter 12, verse 11. Ataita dapi akshokto si kato marjugama shrita sava gama falaitiagam tata kuru yayat bhavam. Word for word translation. Ata, even though itat, this api, also ashaktaha, enable, ashi, you are. Kartum to perform mat unto me. Yogam in devotional service. Ashitaha taking refuge. Sava karma of all activities. Bala of the results. Tiagam renunciation. Tataha then. Guru to Yamatmavan, sorry, Yatatmavan, self situated. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, is the Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Ki Jai. If, however, you are unable to work in this consciousness of me, then try to act, work, giving up all results of your work, and try to be self-situated. Purport. It may be that one is unable even to sympathize with the activities of Krishna consciousness because of social, familial, or religious considerations, or because of some other impediments. One attaches himself directly to the activities of Krishna consciousness. There may be objections from family members and so many other difficulties. But one who has such a problem, it is advised that he sacrifice the accumulated result of his activities to some good cause. Such procedures are described in the Vedic rules. There are many descriptions of sacrifices and special functions for the full moon day, and there is special work in which the result of one's previous action may be applied. Thus one may gradually become elevated to the state of knowledge. It is also found that when one who is not even interested in the activities of Krishna consciousness gives charity to some hospital, some other social institution, and gives up his, he gives up the hard-earned results of his activities. That is also recommended here, because by the practice of giving up the fruits of one's activities, one is sure to purify his mind gradually. And in that purified stage of mind, one becomes able to understand Krishna consciousness. Of course, Krishna consciousness is not dependent on any other experience, because Krishna consciousness itself can purify one's mind. But if there are impediments to accepting Krishna consciousness, one may try to give up the results of his actions. In that respect, social service, community service, national service, sacrifice for one's country, etc., may be accepted so that one day one may become to the stage of pure devotional service to the Supreme Lord. In Bhagavad Gita, chapter 18, verse 46, we find it is stated, Yataha Pravriti Bhutanam, if one decides to sacrifice for the Supreme Cause, even if he does not know that the Supreme Cause is Krishna, will come gradually to understand that Krishna is the supreme cause by the sacrificial method. So let us uh, mute a few people. Hmm. Seems to be somebody there. Okay, just in case if you are unmuted, if you could mute yourself so not to disturb the listeners as well. Let's recite the introduction prayers, the invocation prayers. Please do join in. Om Ajnana Timrandasya Jnana Jana Shalakaya Jakshur Maritam Yena Tasme Shivarabhi Nama Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Shtapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Tadati Swapadantikam Vandeyam Shri Guru Shri Yutapadakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sagana Raghunatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sagana Lalita Shri Vishakavitam Shya He Krishna Karana Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagapate 
Gopisha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostati Tapta Kanchana Gorangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vishabhana Sutta Devi Pranamami Hari Piyay Mancha Kalpata Rupyasha Kripa Sintu Piyavacha Patita Nam Pavani Vyo Vaishnava Vyo Namo Nama Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pashtaya Bhutale Shimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namase Saswati Devam Yauravani Prasharine Nirvishesha Sunyavadi Paschacha Desitarine Jai Shri Krishna Jaitanya Prabhu Nichananda Shri Advaita Gadadar Shivasari Gaura Bhakti Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna once again welcome to tonight's chat session I kindly ask for the uh, blessings of my spiritual master Srila Prabhupada uh, Bhakti Chau Swami Ajagat Guru Srila Prabhupada and to all the devotees listening allowing me to speak on the topics which are favorable in Krishna consciousness and do forgive me for any mistakes today so first of all, I'm just going to quickly go back to some of the verses that were read earlier on. I'll start off with the first number seven. So ultimately, Krishna is actually saying that we he wants us to just completely focus our mind on the Supreme Lord without deviation. And this is... Uh, the ultimate basis of us coming to that self-realized stage, Prashanna uh, Bhutatmana. This is an important stage, but because of our lack of desire, lack of concentration, able to uh, not control our mind, sometimes it is very difficult, you know, to actually completely focus our mind, constantly thinking of Krishna all the time. So here Krishna has given some suggestions of how you could fix your mind or engage yourself in a way that allows you to elevate up the spiritual ladder. So on verse 7, first of all, he's actually saying, sorry, let me put this down. First of all, Krishna is saying, Giving up all your activities unto me and being devoted to me without deviation. So everything that we do, there's always an activity behind it, whether it's raising a family, whether it's uh, taking care of our parents, whether it's going to work, whether it's doing our uh, work in um, the, uh, whatever our social life is. But he's actually saying, whatever those activities are, do it in a way that is devoted to me. So if you're raising a family, try and raise them in a way that is in a Krishna conscious way. If you're taking care of your parents, you may not be fully able to be surrendered to Krishna, but at least give that opportunity to serve your parents. And that way you gain some credit, some bias credit as well, that allows you to move more spiritually closer to Krishna himself. Then he says, engage all your devotional service, always meditating upon me. Of course, devotional service, the most simple thing is Shravanam Kirtana Vishnu, always remembering always hearing about Krishna, chanting his holy names. And it's not too difficult to do wherever you are, whether you're waiting on a bus or waiting on a train or just in the morning when you wake up, as soon as you rise, say that loudly Krishna's name. You want Krishna to be in your heart. You want Krishna, whatever you do, you want to do as a way to please Krishna himself, Krishna's devotees. So try and fix your mind in a way so you're engaged in devotional service. So later on, Prabhupada actually mentions on that particular verse that we're reading from uh, number 11 today. It says that sometimes there may be difficulties in your life that doesn't allow you to do that particular activity. Sometimes in family life, one person, one partner may be very spiritually inclined and the other partner may not be spiritually inclined. And that happens quite a lot in Krishna consciousness. Somebody may be very enthusiastic in Krishna consciousness and the other person may not be so involved but wants to carry on to in indulging in uh, things which are unfavorable in Krishna consciousness. But somehow or another, you have to sort of persevere to a point where if it doesn't actually, um, if you're not able to convince your partner 
where it's actually dragging you from your spiritual path down to the hellish worlds, then you've got to make that decision. Obviously, not your own decision, but get the uh, decisions from an authority who can help you and guide you and support you, counsel you as well. Then later on, Krishna says, having their fixed minds upon me, I'm the swift deliverer of ocean and birth and death. So by fixing your minds, whether you're in a happy situation or in a difficult situation, Krishna ensures that in your next life, that as long as you're remembering him, it allows you to continue in your spiritual journey closer to the Lord's feet of the Supreme Lord. And in text 8, once again, Krishna says, just fix your mind upon me. As we know, the mind is very turbulent, it's very difficult to control, uh, but also Krishna says, for one who has controlled the mind, the mind is the best of friends. For one who has failed to do so, the mind is his greatest enemy. And this is actually a verse which uh, actually stood out in one of the, uh, the one of the famous pop stars. Her name is Chrissy Hind. Uh, she was one of the singer of the Proclaimers. And in, in a biography or in a sort of introduction to a particular Krishna conscious book, she said that this particular verse really stood out to me because she said that uh, when you aren't able to control your mind, then unwanted desires come in all the time. And of course, our senses are always drifting, just like it mentions in the Bhagavad Gita, the senses are compared to a boat, it's drifting on an ocean, and no matter how hard you try and control it, the current of the wind is drifting the uh, the boat continuously further and further away from where your destination is. So the mind is like that, it's constantly been uh, trans. Uh, migrated from one thought to another thought to another thought. Our desires are never, ever saturated. And we want more and more and more. And then what happens? We have difficulty in controlling the mind in a way that is pleasing to Krishna. So Krishna has given you a little hints. If you aren't able to control your mind, at least form your activities in such a way that it's actually given as a sacrifice to the Supreme Lord. Whatever endeavors that you do is actually for the benefit of humanity. Of course, opening a hospital, doing philanthropical work is very beneficial for human society. After all, we are all God's children. That isn't the aim of personal life. The aim of personal life is not only yourself to go back to God, but to try and take everybody around you back to the spiritual world as well. So although you may open up at a beautiful hospital, take care of people who are in um situations which have poor health, diseases, some sort of viruses. You can protect them too on a material platform, but you have to give up protection from a spiritual platform, which is the basis of Krishna consciousness. Engage your intelligence in me, you know, within the mind and intelligence, within the subtle body, mind, intelligence and ego. Ego is always constantly dragging you away. Intelligence is telling you, no, 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 listen to your heart. You want to do the things which are right. Just like we are governed by the laws of nature. In this material world, we know what's right and what's wrong. A child may not know what's right and wrong. He sees a beautiful fire. We may feel attracted to the fire, but he doesn't realize the danger of it. And he wants to put his hand in the fire and it gets uh, burnt because at this stage, he's very vulnerable. His lack of intelligence doesn't know what's right and wrong. But because we're educated in a society, but it teaches you what's right and wrong, just like you have certain uh, standards of laws that you've got to follow. If you are driving on the wrong side of the law, as road, what will happen? It will just cause catastrophe, chaos, accidents, because you're not abiding by the law. So there's certain rules and regulations we have to follow. If we don't follow those rules and regulations, our society would become one spaghetti junction where everybody does whatever pleases them, whatever they want, you know. And Krishna consciousness, it is important that we follow those rules and regulations, and I'll come up to that in a little while. So in text 9, Krishna further explains, if you cannot fix your mind, because as we mentioned, the mind is very strong, very perturbulent, obstinate, and very difficult to control. If you cannot control or fix your mind upon me without deviation, then follow the regulated principles of Bhakti Yoga. And this way, develop a desire to attain me. So what are these regulated principles? When Srila Prabhupada came to the West, prior to him, there were no sort of uh, rules or conditions people had to follow because people were generally very pious. 
And when Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur used to initiate devotees, he would have actually mentioned to refrain from the four regulated principles. Four regulated principles, of course, are no meat eating, no gambling, no intoxication, and no illicit sex. He actually accepted a disciple based on their desire, their devotion, and their commitment in his particular Gordian mouth. But now we have to follow certain rules and regulations, just as I was mentioning earlier on. If we don't abide the rules of the government, you know, there'll be anarchy. People would just go into the bank and just say, look, I want the money, just give it to me. I don't care. You know, there'll be all sorts of chaos. If you don't have rules and regulations, you cannot discipline yourself. But these aren't the only four regulated principles. There are many regulated principles as well. Many ways of actually improving your sadhana and coming to a, a point of Krishna consciousness. Like for instance, Krishna speaks about, you know, waking up early and go to sleep early. Uh, he also mentions about not eating too little and not eating too much. So these are all control of the body, the mind, in a way that allows you to be more of a state of a yogi, to be able to control everything that surrounds around you. Our desires are full of, or our senses are always full of desires. We want to eat something and we want more. We have something, some gadgets, and we want more and more gadgets as well to please our mind. But ultimately, it just leads to more frustrations. <clears throat> so importantly, when Paraksha Maharaj, when, uh, during the end of the Battle of Kurukshetra, while he was traveling around his kingdom as the emperor of the world, he came across a cow that was crying, and he was seeing a cow lamenting, and he asked her, why are you lamenting? You know, why is there tears in your eyes? And he actually felt that that was his duty, it was his dharma, to ensure that nobody in his kingdom would go into a situation of distress. Why would she want to cry? And of course, the cow described that that uh, the bull, Dhammaraj, three of the four legs had been uh, cut away. And then when uh, Pariksha Maharaj actually went to see that there was a king, a rogue king, his name was Kali, dressed as a king, uh, he actually said, what are you doing? Why are you killing this cow? You know, and he chopped off three of the legs. Now, normally Dharma sits on four legs. The four legs are, does anybody know what those four legs represent? I know there's Dharma, Atta, Moksha, Karma, but there was something else as well. I'll give you a clue. One's truthfulness. Second one is austerity. Third one is cleanliness. And the fourth one is mercy. So those four represents the four vices as well. So when Sri Prabhupada started initiating uh, his disciples, he told them to follow these four regulated principles, which, which I mentioned earlier on. No gambling, no illicit sex, no intoxication, and no meat eating. So each of those vices or the legs of Dharma Raj represents one of those vices too. So within truthfulness, it's actually associated to no gambling. That was the last leg, last leg standing. As you can see right now in this particular age of Kali Yuga, there's some level of truthfulness within society. There's the laws that we have to all abide by. There's the uh, control of the government as well, uh, that we all have to follow the rules by set out by the, uh, the government itself. There's uh, the legal cases that we have to follow. If somebody murders somebody, they've been prosecuted in a way. So these are the acts of truthfulness that's still presiding within this society. But of course, it's always polluted. It's always um, been sabotaged in some form or another. You have all these greedy solicitors, greedy lawyers who can manipulate the systems and even find a guilty person innocent as well. So it is very sad to hear that cleanliness represents the fact that we have to refrain from illicit sex. Illicit sex, or rather sex, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, I am the basis of sex. But that sex is based on, which is not contrary to religious principles. So if you are going to have a child, the idea of having sex is acceptable based on accepting or having a child, procreation for a child itself. Austerity, 
Well, austerity is certainly the vice representing my austerities by not taking any intoxications at all. That includes no drugs, no alcohol, of any sort of illegal substances. And the idea is that you can see in this material world how the world is influenced by drug smuggling, by drug intoxication, the, the amount of people who are taken into prison, majority of them are some sort of involvement with drug uh, convictions, either drug uh, trafficking or whether it's drug taking or something like that. Because your mind is not completely 100%, it doesn't have the intelligence, you end up doing unnecessary things, uh, stealing, cheating, gambling, eat, uh, murdering itself. And these are the cause of taking drugs, taking illicit uh, intoxications. The last one is mercy. Mercy is represented by no meat eating. So, of course, most of us are very fortunate. We're born in a, a family of, um, I suppose, uh, in a religious background. We refrain from eating meat, but also refraining from certain um, items which are not favorable as well. No onions, no garlics. Uh, so forth, and try and avoid things which are very high intoxicated, pungent, very spicy, chili, and so forth, because it just leaves us in a mode of passion and ignorance, which uh, devoids our sort of desire to get to the higher level of uh, mode of goodness. So it's very important that uh, we follow these rules, because those rules represent the four pillars. Uh, I know there's the other four representations of Dharma, Dharma at the um, uh, moksha karma. Um, I'll go into that later on if we do have time. So now, carrying on, on verse 10, Krishna actually says, if you cannot practice these regulations, so in other words, the regulations which I was mentioned earlier on, then just try to work for me. Because by working for me, you will come to a perfect stage. So Krishna has been so merciful, he does not just reject people who come to that spiritual level, or wants to come to that spiritual level, as Prabhupada mentions uh, in this purport to text 11, there are many difficulties in our spiritual endeavor. But if there are uh, difficulties in your life, then at least do something to allow you to uh, give those attributes to Krishna himself. And the last verse, which is the verse that we were reading, if however you are unable to work in this consciousness of me, then try to act, giving up all results of your work and try to be self-situated. So here, this particular, uh, if I could just open up the purport, and proper to say something quite amazing, you know. It's not scrolling down, sorry. Okay. Okay. Well, let me just try and find it. Okay. Somewhere along here. Okay, because Krishna conscious of itself can purify actions in that respect, social service, community service, national service, sacrifice for one's country, etc., may be accepted so that someday one may come to the stage of pure devotional service to the Supreme Lord. So, this is really amazing because Sri Prabhupada is not just rejecting people who cannot come to. Krishna consciousness. You may have been involved in helping the elderly people, helping homeless people, helping those with uh, domestic violence. If you are able to help in a way that allows humanity to uh, avoid distress, difficulties, obstacles in their life, then Krishna sees that particular relationship of one human being to another human being. He sees that kindness, he sees that compassion. And that is what Lord Jesus Christ was teaching all about. He didn't explain so much about the supreme personality of God and who his father was. What does he do? What does he look like? But he was so mainly talking about compassion. Love thy neighbor as you love yourself, you know? Thou shalt not murder, referring to not just animals, but to also human beings. Devte, he mentions also community service. You know, community service is part of the welfare within our own neighborhood, our own society, national service. To that point, if there was a situation we had to go to war, what do we do? You know, 
we have to defend our country in a certain way. But of course, we can also refuse because it may be that the government is corrupt and they want to invade another country for no legitimate reason. So we have an obligation, we have the intelligence, we have to use these particular books, the Bhagavad Gita, the Shema Bhagavatam, as the law books to give us guidance and the spiritual authorities, not just make up our own uh, conclusive mind, what's right and what's wrong. So these are very important uh, factors that allows us to go back to Krishna consciousness. Um, so sometimes we do have difficulties in our life or it's difficulties in even understanding about Krishna consciousness. So I remember in the 80s, uh, early 80s, 70s and 80s, many youngsters, many devoted or young newcomers wanted to join the temple. And they didn't really understand fully about Krishna consciousness, but they just enjoyed the association of the devotees. They enjoyed the prasad, and they just loved the compassion and care that the devotees gave. And they would join the temple. And of course, the devotee community were very happy, but also had a negative uh, rebound as well. The prayers of these youngsters, 18, 19 year olds, they objected to this. Some of them are Hindu, some of them were Western uh, people. And they also, also came to the cases where some of them went to court cases. Sometimes uh, uh, people sort of uh, refrained from themselves coming to the temple itself, taking legal action itself. It was a sad situation, but slowly, slowly, the devotee as a guru, they could understand we cannot just take everybody just for the sake of, you know, them wanting to come to the join the temple. There has to be some obligation as well. Of course, when you're over 18, you can make up your own mind. But we also have to pacify the desires and the needs of uh, the well-being of everyone around us as well. For instance, my oldest brother joined the temple. My dad wasn't very happy. My parents weren't very happy. My second brother joined the temple. They weren't very happy, but he joined eventually. And the following year, the third year, I joined after I finished my uh, school studies. I was only 16 and I joined the temple, but my mother was crying so much. She did want me to join and they had to come and see the temple authorities. And the temple authorities, they didn't want to upset my parents because they were very close to the temple a congregation and this community. So they advised me like, why don't you carry on, go to college and then come back when you're ready. Of course, you know, somehow or another, maybe Krishna saved me because Maybe I just wanted to go to the temple because I wanted to avoid studying, <laughs> who knows. But anyway, somehow another Krishna has allowed me to stay amongst the association of devotees, take a shelter of my spiritual master, Bhakti Swami, allowing me to progress in my spiritual life. And sometimes even when you go out on streets, book distribution, I know this is the month of book distribution for the pleasure of uh, Shishirada Gokulananda and all the wonderful temples around the world. The police should have proper. It's so important that we take this opportunity. So many people may not want to come into Krishna consciousness, but it is our duty in some way, just like the way somebody preached to us, somehow or another we became convinced in Krishna consciousness, somehow or another we got attracted by this devotional creeper. We want to pass that same experience, spiritual experience to other people. So today I was, uh, while I was going out on books, and I'm sure many of you have gone on distribution, and I've come across a situation where you come across different people. People say, well, yeah, I do my service. I come to the temple. I have to give donation. But they don't really want to get involved in Krishna consciousness. They don't really see the full benefit. They're happy doing whatever minimal amount they can do. But on the other hand, you may find some people are very obliging. They may not know anything about Krishna consciousness. And they're very inquisitive. I've met one particular a person from the Caribbean and um, when he opened the door he was very intrigued he wanted to know about the Bhagavad Gita he wanted to know about the science of self-realization we had a nice conversation he took a Shabda Rishi set but it just shows you even though you may be born in a spiritual family but you may not want to take it seriously but somebody else who may not be Krishna consciousness or God consciousness they may not really have any taste at all they're very inquisitive and that's basically thanks to Shri Prabhupada presenting these wonderful books, the Bhagavad Gita, Science of self realization and many other books, in a way that we can present to humanity, you know, to allow them to come connected to Krishna consciousness. And uh, we certainly encourage all of you, if you haven't been, 
at least try and speak to one of your family members or neighbors, give one book out if you can, another book. Ultimately, the benefit, you know, who gets that benefit? Of course, Krishna is the supreme proprietor of everything. He is the source of all sacrifices. He is Parameshwara. So everything goes to Krishna eventually because he sees your endeavor, he sees your desire. Oh, this young boy, this young girl, this elderly devotee, elderly Mataji is going out on the streets, it's very cold, but yet they sacrifice in their comfort, they sacrifice in their, their own personal time to go out on the streets to give this distribution of the Harinam, the holy name to other people. How pleased will Krishna be, you know? So we must all take that um, uh, commitment in our way. Sometimes you come across people who say, oh, no, no, no. You know, I'm a Christian, I'm a Muslim, I'm um, this religion or that religion, and they don't really want to take the books. They see it as like a painting in their own religion. So by another, you have to convince them, well, this isn't religion itself. It's an art and arm. It is understanding about truthfulness, about righteousness, about understanding who you are, the soul, that it is part and parcel of the Supreme Lord. Do you, do you understand who you are, why you're coming into this particular world, why you're suffering? And when you start talking about personal issues, they start opening up a little bit, and then you can talk more and more deeply about it. But as soon as you say that it's a religious textbook, they sort of defend themselves. Oh, no, no, I'm a Christian, I'm a Muslim. In fact, today I went and knocked on a door and it's a nice elderly Muslim lady. And she said, oh, thank you very much, but we're actually Muslims. But, uh, you know, and... Uh, I said, well, you know, one of the five principles of a Muslim is to give in charity, which I'd like to give a donation. And she's kindly gave uh, four pound donations, which was really nice. And I gave her a book. And at the same time, you know, I just say Hare Krishna. And the Muslim elderly lady said Hare Krishna. So who knows in the next life, she will get that spiritual benefit as well, you know. So it is important that they may not take up to Krishna consciousness, but just even if they give a pound donation, because if you use it for Krishna service, ultimately give printing more books, giving book distribution, taking care of the kaushala, expanding Krishna consciousness in a way which is beneficial to the world. One interesting thing that uh, my Guru Maharaj once said, um, you know, many, many leaders in the past have come to conquer the world. You know, the Genghis Khan, You've got Alexander the Great, you've had uh, Napoleon. They've tried to take one nation from another nation, you know, by war, by fighting, by using a sword, by using some sort of, uh, you know, cruelty in some way or another. But what happened to all of them? They all failed, you know. They may have uh, established some sort of uh, emperor, uh, empire for a short time, but it was all temporary. Bryce, you mentioned about Shira Prabhupada. Shira Prabhupada is the only person who's able to conquer the world, is able to distribute this love of Krishna to every uh, town and village. And you may say, well, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nichananda Prabhu were there. So they could have uh, expanded, not just stayed in India, so they could expand it to the whole world. If you can imagine, 1486, that's when uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared. And I think in 1520, only 40 years or something, 50 years later, Christopher Columbus went to the West and discovered the Indies, uh, the Caribbean, and of course, later on, America. But can you imagine just a sake of 50, 60, 70 years or so difference? So why did the Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appear to distribute the, uh, the, uh, the holy name to every town and village? Because he wanted that credit to give it to somebody else. And what did Srila Prabhupada do? He did not use any swords, he did not take up any violence, he did not take up any form of uh, uh, political status to conquer another place to give this Krishna consciousness, but he did it by the uh, by the book, just by purity itself. That was his qualifications, that was his weapon, purity. And he was able to distribute this love of God to other nations around the world just by the books that he printed out, Shemad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita. So we are very fortunate that Srila Prabhupada's done that. Uh, just to quickly finish off, when we are talking about uh, endeavoring to serve Krishna in every possible way, sometimes we may think, well, how do I do this, you know? How do I become 
favorable towards Krishna consciousness. So in the Bhakti of Samhita Sindhu, in chapter 1, verse, or I think it's section 1, chapter 4, verse 16, I'll just read the English translation. So the important thing is, sometimes you may have difficulties in your life, but the important fact is that you've got to have Shraddha. So I'll read this uh, particular translation by Goswami, it's written this particular shloka, uh, Nectar of Devotion, I think, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, yeah, translated as Nectar of Devotion by Srila Prabhupada. In the beginning, one must have preliminary desire for self-realization. This will bring one to the stage of trying to associate persons who are spiritually elevated. The next stage, one becomes initiated by an elevated spiritual master. And under his instructions, the neophyte devotee begins the process of devotional service. By execution of devotional service and the guidance of the spiritual master, one becomes free from all material attachment, attains steadiness, and self realization, and acquires a taste for hearing about the absolute personality of Godhead. Sri Krishna. This taste leads one further forward to attachment for Krishna consciousness, which is matured in bhava, or the preliminary stage of transcendental love of God. Real love of God is called prema, the highest perfectional stage of life. So this gives you a little explanation. Sometimes we may not have that desire to serve Krishna, although Krishna is saying, you know, give up all your activities, be self-situated. But in one way, that is still on the level of karma kanda or karma yoga. You're not fully developed your love for Krishna. So here, uh, Rupa Goswami explains the process of developing that love for Krishna, coming to that self-realization. There's a particular word that's actually not in here. It's called shraddha. That's uh, faith. You've got to have that preliminary desire for self-realization, that desire for complete faith. With faith, you can actually develop your next level. Uh, just another verse to finish off. And to protect yourself from that devotional service, when you develop that devotional service, even from uh, fruit of activities, one should try and refrain from certain uh, anartas to prevent you from uh, building up your spiritual acquaintance to the Supreme Lord. So in this particular verse, this is Nectar of Instruction. This is... Uh, verse number two, the translation will read, Once the virtual service is spoiled by one and it becomes too entangled in the following six activities, it is more than necessary. So once again, if you've given up all your results to Krishna, just eat what is necessary for you. Don't even indulge. Don't collect more funds than what is required. Sometimes it's very tempting to work and work and work more over time. But if you do work, at least give those fruitive results to Krishna up, establish new temples, schools, uh, food for life, goshalas, etc. Number two, over endeavoring for mundane things that are very difficult to obtain. We always have a desire to obtain something. But we know at the end of the time, when our time comes to an end, it's going to be gone. We were not going to be able to take it with us. A beautiful car, beautiful house, everything. But if you learn to build a beautiful house, use it to invite people to come to your home. Your home, make it like a temple, offer them prasadam. If you have a big house, you know, take it to please to your devotees, go in from one place to another place, serve the devotees. Talking unnecessarily about mundane subject matters, as you know, in the material world, there's so many mundane subject matters, like the Siddhartha Saraswati Thakur says, if I had the, uh, the facility, if you actually look at the material world, there are so many books, so many publications on things which are not related to transcendental activities. So if you can imagine if God is unlimited, then all his transcendental literatures would be unlimited too. So we should read only thing that is of beneficial in our spiritual life. Avoid mundane subject matters, things that don't actually help you in your, your spiritual life. Social media, which has no reference to uh, spiritual matters, avoid that. Practicing the scriptural rules and regulations only for the sake of following them. So once again, when we follow rules and regulations, we shouldn't take that whimsically. We must try and follow and understand what is it, what is it that's particular to me for truthfulness, uh, mercy, austerity. Um, the last one was... Cleanliness. So try and avoid the regulations, no gambling, illicit sex, intoxication, meat eating. But don't just, you know, follow them for the sake of following it. 
when you want to follow them because you want to make spiritual advancement, you want to prevent yourself from falling into the spiritual trap. And also don't reject the rules and regulations of the scriptures that working independently or whimsically. Sometimes people want to dilute it. They want the best of both worlds, material life and spiritual life. And unfortunately, it doesn't work. You only come back to frustration itself. So you must follow the authorities, authorities which have been um, authorized by the, uh, the Acharyas, the Disciplic Succession itself. Five associated with worldly-minded persons who are not interested in Krishna consciousness. You know, at work, sometimes we have people who are talking about football, unnecessary things that's going around the world, you know, perhaps talking about indulging in uh, uh, sense enjoyment and so forth. That doesn't actually progress you in your spiritual life. So avoid those kind of personalities. They only just lead you to negativity, bad energy, and um, it causes disruption in your own spiritual life and disturbance in your mind. To being greedy, number six, from being greedy for mundane achievements. We all have a desire to attain some sort of achievements. Without enthusiasm, we can't achieve anything at all. We try and use that achievement in a way that we can please Krishna. We have so many wonderful devotees who have become very senior in uh, their works, societies, uh, or communities. But at the same time, they're using that position to hold seminars, invited leaders of the spiritual uh, uh, devotees of the ISKCON to come to hold certain pro programs at their, their offices, at their workplaces. We also I work for London Underground. We invite quite a few devotees to speak on different subject matters, to have interfaith discussions of different groups, Christian group, Jewish group, Muslim group, etc. We have a nice dialogue. Supposedly we talk about reincarnation, then everybody follows through as well. So those are some of the topics. I hope that helps you a little bit in understanding about fruit of activities, surrendering everything to Krishna, even if your mind's not focused on the Supreme Lord. At least try and do whatever you can, whatever activity you can for pleasing Krishna himself. So it's coming to almost 10 to 9. I don't actually have my family business book with me, but with your permission, I'll just quickly read something from another book called The Nectar Book Distribution. It's a beautiful book. It's uh, compiled by many devotees and many uh, dialogues between Srila Prabhupada and devotees on the importance of book distribution. It's taken extracts from certain books, uh, from BBT books on book distribution, the importance of it. It also gives you a little uh, summary or some realizations by devotees who go on book distribution. So this one particular devotee called Navina Nirada does was one of the biggest book distributors and probably still is. He mentions we should distribute Srila Prabhupada's books, not only cookbooks or small books like coming back. These smaller books add spice to the distribution and provide variety for people taking a lot of books or for those who have already taken have them. The devotees should learn to distribute the big books. At first a devotee may like distributing a certain book to increase that distribution, we should learn the art of giving more than one book to, to a person. When we distribute mostly small or medium books, the donations will remain small. By our presenting the Maha Big Books, people are willing to give big donations. Many people are interested in our books and willing to pay the proper price. So usually I try to sell at least two hardband books or more. And then I offer small books or brochure as a gift, which I clearly point out as the introduction to other books. I also show people which books they should read first. If someone takes several books, we shouldn't mind taking our time to explain how to proceed in reading the books. It takes just a couple of minutes and leaves a nice impression. For people who want to give just a few coins, a small book is the, the solution. Don't give people only big books or nothing, but also don't give only small books or nothing. We should give people a chance to buy big books and make big donations. Of course, some countries of Asia, Africa, South and Latin America, small books are much more practical and successful. A good physician knows how to administer medicine perfectly. The dose should not be too big or too small. Now, another section, a realization by a devotee called Hari Mananda Das. Following the instructions of Srila Prabhupada, the BBT was to translate and print all the books of Srila Prabhupada in every language. This means that Sakita devotees would distribute different books at different times, depending on what's printed. In this way, a great variety of books would become available 
as the phrase BBT grows strong and gradually produced in entire set in all languages. Of course, a certain number of each books will be kept aside so that full sets are readily available over a long period of time. When all of Sheila Popper's books are produced in a certain language, then the introductory books can be printed again in big quantities. For example, in German, we have all the books translated and we have some introductory big books for mass distribution are printed in huge quantities. The larger the press, the larger the press run, the lower the book price. But the people pay the usual price. And thus we can also give the Maha books, along with the big books, for a relatively cheap price. With a system, there's not a big price difference between big and Maha books. And therefore, it's also possible to mass distribute the more expensive Maha big books. The Maha Bhagavad Maha Bhagavad Gita, Shema Bhagavatam, in this way, many people get more than one book. For example, if a person takes five books, this means he gets two or three introductory books, like Science of self realization Life Comes from Life, the proper Leela Amrita, or Krishna books, one or two Maha big books. In other words, when the BBT is strong, we can have up to 10 mass distribution books, including Bhagavad Gita, Shema Bhagavatam, first and second cantos. Jai Shi Shi Nectar Book Distribution Ki Jai Shil Prabhupada Ki Jai So I'll just end there. Is there any questions at all? No, thank you very much everybody for joining in. Please forgive me for any mistakes. Um, and I certainly wish you all the best for next week. Do go out on book distribution if you can, even if you're able to just do one book. You know, that one book be could be worth more than somebody else giving out 100 books who has a lot of ego. And of course, our desire is to get everyone closer to Krishna's lotus feet, as I mentioned. Thank you so much, everyone. Manchakapa, Tharubhyasya, Kribhasindhubhyayvacha, Matitana, Bhavanebhyo, Vaishnavibhyo, Namo Namaha. Hare Krishna, everyone. Thank you. 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 Thank you.